Hey, what's up guys? It's Mike with Alpha Reptile back to another video today and today we're doing a frog, frog room, room tour, tour of Jungle Jewel Exotics with Lucas here. The other half is Don. away right now. But, I mean, we got a couple tanks to show you guys and some really cool frogs. So make sure you stay tuned and we'll get right into the tour. Well, let's take a look and see what's out. Sure. Uh, so we have our row of Ranatomeas. Uh, in here are all, all the various different pairs of frogs that we're keeping right now. Um, it's the middle of the day, so everybody's hiding, but let's see who's out right now. I swear, there's frogs in there. <laughs> well, if you want to go track down some there, I'll just film some of the tanks and we can... Because I'm sure those guys are out. <laughs> You got somebody out there? Nope. <laughs> They're filming inside tanks. Well, it doesn't seem like there's many out right now, but uh, we're going to show you some of the larger tanks and some of the erratas that Lucas and Don have here. I'll throw in some couple pictures right now for you guys to check out some of the Ranatomea that they have. Alrighty. one of the Ancus three guys. Those guys are really cool. Very similar to the Santa Isabel, but with the blue race stripe instead of that green race stripe. Yeah, they look gorgeous. And breed like popcorn from what I hear. Uh, yeah, they're fairly, very prolific. Here are some of our Aratus Costa Rican green blacks. Oh, these guys look just like toys. I mean, you guys can just see all their tanks that they got going. That was something really common on the last ones, growing moss on all your stuff. Did you guys add the moss? Did you? It's, it's a combination of adding the moss and just spontaneous growth. Uh, we're using our own blend um, for our background, which has uh, cocoa fiber in it, some clays and various uh, different things. And there's spores of mosses that are there uh, that just started to grow. Um, with the frogs hopping around, they're going to be transporting more of the spores around the tank and give it a year or so and everything's really nice and green. And automatic misting. That's, the one that's, that's a big key. Yeah. And lots of light. You know, a lot of people think that mosses don't require a lot of light and they can grow in low light situations, but they will thrive in a, uh, uh, with more light. Yeah. Here's some of our blue blacks out right now. Let's see if they'll hang out. This is actually a coconut hut that uh, has moss growing over it. If I lift it up, we have our petri dish and one of the uh, super blue erratas hanging out underneath. Nice. Sweet. That's like one of my favorite looks is the coconut uh, moss growing over the coconut yeah. hut. It's so nice. It takes a while. Coconut yes. by itself doesn't have a whole lot of nutrition. No. 
with moss. Mosses grow in a low nutritious. Yep. Oh, now you're showing off. It's so dirty. What do we have out here? These are Tanctorius Robertus. There's lots of light in there. You guys are super variable as you can tell. These are all the same species, but just extremely variable. Well, I really like that uh, lightning flashing that's on their sides. Yeah. But that doesn't start to appear until they're about nine months to a year out of water. Is it that long? Yeah, it's a long time. Holy smokes. When these guys are ready and available, they're actually, uh, they look just like the cobalts. Yeah. Yeah, if I were to mix them with the cobalts, you wouldn't be able I, to tell. I wouldn't be able to tell. Yeah. Yeah, I remember you guys saying that. Cool, cool. And those guys are relatively new additions, aren't they? Like. Yeah, we, two ago we've only had the Robertus for about a year and a half, yeah. uh, but have been successful at uh, breeding and raising them. Nice. Oh, somebody found a string. box snake. Hi. You want to play with string? What do you think of the frogs? Like, no, I want to play with string. Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. Floppy kitty. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, there's a uh, Punta Laurel right here. Oh, yeah, I see now. Let's see if we can get that guy. This is a Ufaga Pomelio Punta Laurel? Correct. Now, when they were originally imported, they were imported under the wrong name, Punta Laurent, but that locale doesn't exist. Really? Correct. No, that is true. Hmm. So you'll see a lot of places say that they have uh, Punta Laurent's when that's... Is there is there a that locale though? Like, uh, is there a Punta Laurent locale? There's a Punta Laurel. Okay. Yeah. So they're just completely a wrong name. <laughs> Somebody misspelled it, they admitted to it, and, uh, Classic. but it, it stuck. And the thing is, that when you're doing the CITES paperwork, it was the Ophaga Pomelio. Yeah. They don't care about the locale. Yeah. This is a Metecho, right? Uh, no, no. Those are? Those are still the Huh. Mm. But they look an awful lot like the Metechos. Yeah, they And so these are the Oyopox? Yeah, these are the Tinctorious Oyopox. And these are a dwarf tank, correct? Yeah, these are the smallest of the Tinctora species. Really cool. Very nice colors on those guys. See these guys, more oil pops. That like clean division is so nice. Mm -hmm. There are also some nice lines. And... Nice, nice. Of course, Classics. The, the iconic Azorius. Make sure there's no geckos up at the top on us. <laughs> there is. Okay. Oh God. That's a morning gecko? Yeah. Morning geckos are one of the very few geckos uh, that I would mix with frogs. Um, stays really small. Small is very non-aggressive uh, and stays at the upper strata of the tank. So when I'm mixing it with the Tinctoria species, they stay at the bottom half. The uh, geckos at the top and they live perfectly fine together. In fact, they're even producing lots of eggs. Mm. One or two here and there. Yeah, just a few. They're highly prolific. Yeah. One of the really cool things about them is that they do not require a male 
They can just clone themselves and lay the eggs. That's an Genesis, baby. Mm -hmm. This guy's gonna jump. That's gonna look cool. Yeah. Come on. Go. Mm -hmm. Fail jump. Wah, wah. Mighty frog. Go. The iconic frog of the dark frogs. Quite commonly, one of the first frogs that people will get. A lot of people ask, "What is the uh, what's a great starter frog?" And I mean, the quick answer would be whatever you're passionate about. Don't just get it because it's got a flashy color, or you hear that it's an easy frog to keep. Get it because you're um, genuinely interested in the frog, and uh, that you you've done all your homework. And you want to read up on it and, and learn everything about it because they require you to get all of their uh, their needs. 100% correct. That being said, the Tinctoria species tend to be one of the first frogs that people get because they are um, fairly bold, charismatic, and relatively easy to care for. Although I can give the same argument for the uh, thumbnail species. There's a... Uh, finally, oh, ooh! Reticulata? Yep. Yep, we're good. Okay. Thank God. And typical retakes. Victorious New River. Looks a lot like the Azurius. Much bigger splotches, slightly different colors, but uh, still very, very cool. Yeah, these guys are gorgeous. And those aren't super common in Canada, are they? No, they're not. There's, there's only a, a few breeding groups out there. Um, we've got a couple of them but I think uh, the female's a little bit older, so they're not producing very valuable eggs. And I'm moving over towards one of the non-dart frogs that Jungle Jewel has, and these are the glass frogs. Reticulated glass frog. Well, they've been busy the last, uh, last week or so, and we've actually got eggs kind of scattered all over the, the tank. This isn't a normal behavior. Uh, they get really, really excited, and they just drop their eggs, and they're in amplexus, they'll be fertile. However, there is a male sitting on a whole batch of eggs right here. Check these guys out. You see all the little tadpoles starting to move in there? Father sitting there, he's, he's gonna defend the eggs if he needs to. So cool. Yeah, these guys are really, really awesome. You know what? We should look at. Uh... Try them? Yeah. So these are a fairly rare frog to have in the hobby in the first place. Um, we managed to get a hold of some adult Boana picturatus through understory via uh, Wakiri in Ecuador. There are three known cases in the world outside of Ecuador that have been raising or breeding and raising the Boana picturatus. We're one of them. The others would be the Manchester Zoo and a private collector in Germany. Crazy. Pretty proud of that. Is there any way you could like put your thumb next to them or like your index finger or something? Point your finger right there. There you go. That's how small they are. Tiny, tiny little dudes. Alrighty. And transition to the parents. And these are the parents right here. So we're gonna wake one of them up here. Say hi. Those are those are two females, right? Yeah.
That's awesome. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. We're, um, there we go. So that brings it to the end of the video, you guys. I hope you guys kind of enjoyed this meandering tour, uh, looking across many different tanks, just kind of observing the frogs and checking them out. Uh, we saw some pretty cool frogs and uh, a lot of more crazy stuff in here. Unfortunately, I'm here at like three in the afternoon and most dart frogs are not out at that time. So we got what we could. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Lucas, go for it. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button, which is probably like right down here. Maybe it's over somewhere. Here. Well, Hit there. that button, right? That's what it's all about here. If you want, check out our page as well. You can find us on uh, Facebook and Instagram at Jungle Jewel Exotics. Um, and if you really like the uh, Boana Picturatus, check out uh, on Instagram and on the internet, hashtag Save the Choco, and that's C H O C O or www.savethechoco.com. That's uh, trying to save the rainforest in Ecuador, uh, Panama, and in Colombia. What they're doing is they're purchasing la uh, rainforest and uh, helping preserve it so that uh, loggers, uh, palm oil, and, and other companies are going in there just ripping the forest out from underneath these animals. This is their home and they need it there to live. Yeah, and this is our planet, you guys. You guys know that I'm all about conservation on this channel and we're trying to work on more stuff like that in the future, so that is definitely a good place to start. Of course, you guys can also follow them on Facebook, Instagram... Twitter, YouTube... Yeah, all the places, <laughs> <laughs> Jungle Jewel Exotics. And if you guys want another video like this, make sure you show it some love and leave your suggestions for what you'd like to see next time in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. Bye. And we'll catch you in the next video. Later.